Hi guys, it's June 12th. We are here for a Bible in a Year challenge reading. That is going to come from 1 Chronicles chapters 1 through 3, Psalms 74, and 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay, so 1 Chronicles chapter 1, from Adam to Noah's sons. The descendants of Adam were Seth, Enosh, Kenan, or Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. Okay. The sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Descendants of Japheth. The descendants of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. The descendants of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Togarmah. The descendants of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Radanim. Descendants of Ham. The descendants of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The descendants of Cush were Seba, Hivala, Sabta, Rama, and Sabteca. The descendants of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the who was known across the earth as a heroic warrior. Mizraim was the ancestor of the Ludites, Anamites, Lehabites, and Naphtuhites. Oh, there's more. Pathruzites, Kazluhites, and the Kaphtarites, from whom the Philistines came. Okay. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon, the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemorites, and Hamathites. Descendants of Shem. The descendants of Shem were Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The descendants of Aram were Uz, Hul, Gether, and Mash. Arphazad was the father of Shelah. Shelah was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons. The first was named Peleg, quote unquote, division. For during his lifetime, the people of the world were divided into different language groups and dispersed. His brother's name was Jokdan. Jokdan was the ancestor of Almadad, Shelah, Hazarmavith, Jera. Hadaram, Uzzel, Dikla, Obel, Amamiel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were descendants of Joktan. So this is a family line descended from Shem. Arphaxad, Shela, Eber, Peleg, Ru, Sarah, Nahor, Terah, and Abram, later known as Abraham. Okay. Descendants of Abraham. The sons of Abraham are Isaac and Ishmael. The sons of Ishmael were Nebaioth, the oldest, Keter, Adbil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Naphish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael. The sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, were Zimriam, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. The sons of Jokshan were Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Midian were Epha, Epher, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were sons of Abraham by his concubine Keturah. Descendants of Isaac. Abraham was the father of Isaac. The sons of Isaac were Esau and Israel. Okay. Descendants of Esau. The sons of Esau were Eliphaz, Reel, Jush, Caleb, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zeph Zepho, Gatam, Kenaz, and Amalek, who was born to Timnah. The sons of Ruel were Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. Original peoples of Adam. The sons of Seir were Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishon. The sons of Lotan were Hori and Heman. Lotan's sister was named Timnah. The sons of Shobal were Alvin, 
Amman, Amahath, Ebel, Shepho, and Onam. The sons of Zimeon were Aya and Anna. The sons of Anna was Deshaun. The sons of Deshaun were Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Kurin. The sons of Ezra were Bilhan, Vazan, and Akan. The sons of Dishan were Uz and Aaron. Rulers of Edom. These are the kings who ruled in Edom before there were kings in Israel. Bela, son of Beor, who ruled from his city of Dinhabah. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah from Basra, became king. When Jobab died, Hosham from the land of the Tabanites became king. When Hosham died, Hadad, son of Bedad, became king and ruled from the city of Avith. He was the one who destroyed the Midianite army in the land of Moab. When Hadad died, Samla from the city of Masreka became king. When Samla died, Shal from the city of Rehoboth on the Euphrates River became king. When Shal died, Bel Hanan, son of Akbor, became king. When Baal Hanan died, Hadad became king and ruled from the city of Pau. His wife was Mehetabel, the daughter of Matrid and granddaughter of Mezahab. Then Hadad died. The clan leaders of Adam were Timna, Alva, Jetheth, Aholibama, Ella, or Ela, Pinon, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Magdiel, and Iram. These are the clan leaders of Adam. This is a lot of names. Okay, chapter 2, Descendants of Israel. The sons of Israel were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Descendants of Judah. Judah had three sons through Bathsheba, a Canaanite woman. Their names were Er, Onan, and Shelah, but the oldest son, Er, was a wicked man, so the Lord killed him. Later, Judah had twin sons through Tamar, his widowed daughter-in-law. Their names were Perez and Zerah. So Judah had five sons in all. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamuel. The sons of Zerah were Zimri, Ethan, Haman, Calcal, and Darda, five in all. Achan, son of Carmi, one of Zerah's descendants, brought disaster on Israel by taking plunder that had been set apart for the Lord. Okay. The son of Ethan was Az Azariah. From Judah's grandson Hezron to David. The sons of Hezron were Jeremiel, Ram, and Caleb. Ram was the father of Ammonadab. Ammonadab was the father of Nashon and leader of Judah. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse's first son was Eliab. His second was Abinadab. His third was Shimea. His fourth was Nathaniel. His fourth was Radai. His sixth was Ozem. And his seventh was David. Okay. Their sisters were named Zeruiah and Abigail. Zeruiah had three sons named Abishai, Job, and Asahel. Abigail married a man named Jether, an Ishmaelite, and they had a son named Amasa. Descendants of Hezron's son, son Caleb. Hezron's son Caleb had two wives named Azaba and Jerioth. Azaba's sons were named Jeshur, Shobab, and Ardon. After Azaba died, Caleb married Eph. Ephrathah, and they had a son named Hur. Hur was the father of Uri. Uri was the father of Bezalel. When Hezron was 60 years old, he married Gilead's sister, the daughter of Machir. They had a son named Segub. Segub was the father of Jer, who ruled 23 towns in the land of Gilead. Later, Geshur and Aram captured the towns of Jer and also took Keneth and its 60 surrounding villages. All these were descendants of Machir, the father of Gilead. Soon after Hezron died in the town of Caleb, Ephratha, his wife Abigail gave birth. His work, sorry, his wife Abijah gave birth to a son named Asher, the father of Tekoa. Descendants of Hezron's son Jeremiel. The sons of Jeremiel, the oldest son of Hezron, were Ram, the oldest, Buna, Oren, Ozem, and Ahijah. Jeremiel had a second wife named Atara. She was the mother of Onam. The sons of Ram, the oldest son of Je Jeremiel, were Maz. Jamin and Eker. The sons of Onan were Shammai and Jada. The sons of Shammai were Nadab and Abishur. The sons of Abishur and his wife Abihail were 
Abun and Malid. The sons of Nadab were Selad and Apaim. Selad died without children, but Apaim had a son named Ishi. The son of Ishi was Sheshun. Sheshun had a descendant named Ali. Shammai's brother Jada had two sons named Jether and Jonathan. Jether died without children, but Jonathan had two sons named Peleth and Zaza. These were all descendants of Jeremiel. Sheshan had no sons, so he did have daughters. He also had an Egyptian servant named Jarha. Sheshan gave one of his daughters to be the wife of Jarha, and they had a son named Atai. That's the wife of Jerha. Okay, it's servant. Okay. Atai was the father of Nathan. Nathan was the father of Zab Zabad. Zabad was the father of Ephlal. Ephlal was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jehu. Jehu was the father of Azar Azariah. Azariah was the father of Helez. Helez was, was, was the father of Elisa. Elisa. Elisa was the father of Sismai. Sismai was the father of Shalom. Shalom was the father of Jechemiah. Jechemiah was the father of Elishama. Descendants of Hezron's son, Caleb. The oldest son of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiel, was Mesa, Mesha, the father of Ziph. Caleb's second son was Meresha, the father of Hebron. The sons of Hebron were Korah, Tapua, Rechem, and Shema. Shema was the father of Rama. Ram was the father of Jorkim. Rechem was the father of Shammai. The son of Shammai was Maon. Man was the father of Beth Zur. Caleb's concubine, Epha, gave birth to Haran, Moza, and Gazes. Haran was the father of Gazes. The sons of Jadai were Regem, Jotham, Geshen, Pellet, Epha, and Shaph. Another of Caleb's concubines, Maka, gave birth to Sheber and Tirana. She also gave birth to Shaph, the father of Madmana, and Sheba, the father of Mac. Bena and Gibeah. Caleb also had a daughter named Aksha. These were all descendants of Caleb. Descendants of Caleb's son, Hur. The sons of Hur, the oldest son of Caleb's wife, Ephrathah, were Shobal, the father of Kiriath Jerim, Salma, the father of Bethlehem, and Hareph, the father of Beth Gator. The descendants of Shobal, the father of Kiriath Jerim, were Herwe, the half the Manahathites and the families of Kiriath Jerim, the Ithrites, Puthites, Shumathites, and Mishrites, from whom came the people of Zorah and Eshtio. The descendants of Salma were Bethlehem, the Nedophathites, Atroth, Beth Job, and the other half of the Manahathites, the Zorites, and the families of scribes living in Jabez. The Tirathites, Shimethites, and Sukathites. All these were Kenites who descended from Hama, Hamath, the father of the family of Rechab. And chapter 3, Descendants of David. Okay, so there's a lot of names in this book, but there are also stories as we get back a little further. Chapter 3, Descendants of David. These are the sons who were born to David in Hebron. The oldest was Amnon, whose mother was ah Ahinoam of Jezreel. The second was Kiliab, whose mother was Abigail from Carmel. The third was Absalom, whose mother was Maka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Jeshur. The fourth was Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith. The fifth was Shephatiah, Shepha whose mother was Atabal. Abital. The sixth was Ithrim, whose mother was Egla. These six sons were born to David in Hebron, where he reigned seven and a half years. Then David moved the capital, capital to Jerusalem, where he reigned another 33 years. The sons born to David in Jerusalem included Shimea, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. Bathsheba, the daughter of Amiel, was the mother of these sons. David also had nine other sons. Ibhar, Elishua, Elpelet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphelet. These are the sons of David, not including the sons of his concubines. David also had a daughter named Tamar. Descendants of Solomon. The descendants of Solomon were Rehoboam, 
Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Ahaziah, Josh, Amaziah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, he Hezekiah, Manasseh, Amon, and Josiah. The sons of Josiah were Johanan, the oldest, Jehoiakim, the second, Zedekiah, the third, and Je Jehoaz, the fourth. Jehoiakim was succeeded by his son, Jehoiachin. He, in turn, was succeeded by his uncle, Zedekiah. Descendants of Jehoiachin. The sons of Jehoiachin, who was taken prisoner by the Babylonians, were Shealtiel, Malkaram, Pediah, Shenazar, Jechemiah, Hashima, and Nedabiah. The sons of Pediah were Zerubbabel and Shimei. The sons of Zerubbabel were Meshulam and Hananiah. He also had a daughter named Shelemith. His five other sons were Hashiba, oh Ohel, Berechiah, Hasadiah, and Jeshab Hesed. The sons of Hananiah were Pelatiah and Jeshiah. Jeshiah's son was Rephiah. Rephiah's son was Arnan. Arnan's son was Obadiah. Obadiah's son was Shechaniah. Shechaniah's descendants were Shemiah, Shemiah, and his sons, Hattish, Igal, Bariah, Neriah, and Shaphat, six in all. The sons of Neriah were Elo Eloianai, Hizkiah, and Azrakam, three in all. The sons of Elianai were Hadaviah, Eliashib, Peliah, Akab, Johanan, Deliah, and Anai, seven in all. Those are some tricky names. And I probably butchered all of them. Okay. We're done with 1 Corinthians. Psalm 40, Psalm 74. Okay. A Psalm of Asaph. Oh God, why have you rejected us forever? Why is your anger so intense against the sheep of your own pasture? Remember that we are the people you chose in ancient times. The tribe you redeemed as your own special possession. And remember Jerusalem, your home here on earth. Walk through the awful ruins of the city. See how the enemy has destroyed your sanctuary. That's what we were talking about last night. How everything was destroyed. There your enemies shouted their victorious battle cries. There they set up their battle standards. They chopped down the entrance like woodcutters in a forest. With axes and picks, they smashed the carved paneling. They set the sanctuary on fire, burning it to the ground. They utterly defiled the place that bears your holy name. Then they thought, let's destroy everything. So they burned down all the places where God was worshipped. We see no miraculous signs as evidence that you will save us. All the prophets are gone. No one can tell us when it will end. How long, O oh God, will you allow our enemies to mock you? Will you let them dishonor your name forever? Why do you hold back your strong right hand? Unleash your powerful fist and deliver a death blow. You, O oh God, are my king from ages past, bringing salvation to the earth. You split the sea by your strength and smashed the sea monsters' heads. You crushed the heads of Leviathan and let the desert animals eat him. You caused the springs and streams to gush forth, and you dried up rivers that never run dry. Both day and night belong to you. You made the starlight and the sun. You set the boundaries of the earth, and you make both summer and winter. See how these enemies scoff at you, Lord. A foolish nation has dishonored your name. Don't let these wild beasts destroy your doves. Don't forget your afflicted people forever. Remember your covenant promises, for the land is full of darkness and violence. Don't let the downtrodden be constantly disgraced. Instead, let these poor and needy ones give praise to your name. Arise, O oh God, and defend your cause. Remember how these fools insult you all day long. Don't, over, don't overlook these things your enemies have said. They, their uproar of rebellion grows ever louder. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul and Apollos, servants of Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to mature Christians. I had to talk as though you belonged to this world or as if 
You were infants in the Christian life. I had to feed you with milk and not with solid foods because you couldn't handle anything stronger. And you still aren't ready, for you are still controlled by your own sensual des desires. You are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your own desires? You're acting like people who don't belong to the Lord. When one of you says, I'm a follower of Paul, and another says, I prefer Apollos, aren't you acting like those who are not Christians? Who is Apollos and who is Paul that we should be the cause of such quarrels? Why, we're only servants. Through us, God caused you to believe. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. My job was to plant the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it. But it was God, not we, who made it grow. The, one, the ones who do the planting or watering aren't important, but God is important because he is the one who makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work as a team with the same purpose, yet they will be rewarded individually according to their own hard work. We work together as partners who belong to God. You are God's field, God's building, not ours. Because of God's special favor to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any other foundation than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Now anyone who builds on that foundation may use gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But there is going to come a time of testing at the Judgment Day to see what kind of work each builder has done. Everyone's work will be put through the fire to see whether or not it keeps its value. If the work survives the fire, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builders themselves will be saved, but like someone escaping through a wall of flames. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? God will bring ruin upon anyone who ruins this temple, for God's temple is holy, and you, Christians, are that temple. Stop fooling yourselves. If you think you are wise by this world's standards, you will have to become a fool so that you can become wise by God's standards. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God, as the scriptures say. God catches those who think they are wise in their own cleverness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise and that they are worthless. So don't take pride in following a particular leader. Everything belongs to you. Paul and, Apoll Paul and Apollos and Peter, the whole world and life and death, the present and the future, everything belongs to you. And you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. This is all for today's reading. We'll see you tomorrow.